God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. And I'll be reading chapter 18 from the book of Proverbs, um, Expository Study Bible, so the notes included, King James Version. And as always, we ask God, in the mighty name of Jesus, to please bless us with the revelation of this word, so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and also that this word be hidden in our hearts. All right. Foolish and wise words. All right. If you've been following along, you know what makes you foolish, and you know what makes you wise. Reading the Bible makes you wise. Not reading the Bible makes you a fool. All right. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeks and inter intermeddles with all wisdom. Multiple tens of millions in the world all over separate themselves and seek to learn the wisdom of the ages without the Bible. Such presents itself as a fruitless exercise. A fool has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. The fool of this proverb is the one who constantly tries to find himself. Proper understanding of oneself can only be found in the Bible. So, um, to relate this to um, today for you, you know, when you hear, um, you have these, uh, you know, these people like, um, like on YouTube and such, like a person like Jordan Peterson, um, you know, that's a, that would be a good example of somebody that if you, if, when I hear him talk, all I hear is foolishness, absolute foolishness. But yet the people in the world would consider him to be wise or intelligent when he speaks just absolute foolishness. I mean, foolish. So that would be a prime example of people that the world would look at. They're not, you know, people will look at and say, oh, they're so smart. They got so much wisdom. They're so intelligent. But when you know the Bible, you hear these people talk and it's like, it's, it's just unbelievably foolish. It's so, it's just, it's nothing. It's like, it's just so useless. It's gibberish, just gibberish. And so if you want wisdom, you'll read your Bible. Because if you don't, you're only going to have foolishness. It's just that simple. When the wicked comes, then comes also contempt, and with uh, ignominy, reproach. The less one values the Bible, the less contempt one will favor for the way of the wicked. The words of a man's mouth are as deep as waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. The worldly wisdom of a man is like a, a brackish pool that quickly dries up. However, for the man who knows and understands the Bible, his mouth will be as deep as waters. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. The only correct judgment in the world is that which comes from the righteous, mostly and with a great loss, they are ignored. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for strokes. A fool's mouth and his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Spiritually, the fool is the one who does not know the Bible. Because of his lack of true knowledge, he will quickly find trouble. His mouth will guarantee his destruction. The words of a talebearer are, are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. A talebearer in this passage is likened to a slanderer. His words are as morsels that go down to the heart of the listener and cause wounds. He also, who is slothful in his work, is brother to him who is, who is a great waster. The great waster is one who does not properly care for that which is entrusted to him. The name of the Lord is strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. The correct spiritual posture for the Christian is to fear Satan and in no way attempt to face him in one's own strength, but instead quickly run to Christ. Only there is one, only there is one guaranteed safety. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and his high walls and his own conceit. Verse 11 contrasts with verse 10. Verse 10, in fact, in verse 11 is fiction. Only the one who runs to the Lord will be safe. The one who runs to the riches saw out of his own conceit 
and ultimately comes to destruction. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. The spirit of the world is pride and haughtiness. It ultimately leads to destruction. The spirit of Christ is humility. It ultimately leads to honor. He who answers a matter before he hears it is a folly and shame unto him. The Holy Spirit is telling us here that no man, at least within himself, can be so brilliant or intelligent that he cannot make the proper decision before hearing all the matter. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? The world and even the church are full of man-made solutions to the wounded spirit. Faith in Christ is the tony work, which is the only answer. The heart of the prudent gets knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. The only true knowledge of life is the Bible. A man's gifts makes room for him and brings him before great men. The idea of the Holy Spirit imposes that the individual is, is there, not because of himself, but due to his gift. The possessor of such must never forget that the giver of this gift is God. He who is first in his own cause seems just, but his neighbor comes and searches him. The Holy Spirit is telling us that we should not jump to conclusions upon hearing the first witness. The lot causes cont <clears throat> contentions to cease and parts between the mighty. The lot has to do with the Old Testament, um, Urim and Th Thummini. They were used to divine the will of the Lord in specific matters. This tells us that we must seek God's will in all matters, for he alone holds the solution. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. The word offended should have been translated injured. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. If the fruit of the mouth and the increase of the lips be heavenly, then there is inward uh, contentment. If not, then there is inward desolation. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and, though, and they who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Christians who constantly talk doubt, in effect, talk death. Those who speak the word of God speak life. Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. This passage tells us that celibacy for believers is not required, and marriage is honorable in all. The poor uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. Sad, this proverb has been true for all time. The poor and needy cry to the rich for the necessities of life, but all too often they are answered roughly. One day Jesus is coming back, and then these terrible wrongs will be made right. A man who has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The greatest friend of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So there's a lot, a lot to take in with this chapter. Um, <clears throat> so we see that you can have a wife. You can have a wife. That's biblical. God says you can have a wife. All right. It's a good thing. But if 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 God has it where you don't have to have a wife, then, hey, that's great. God bless you, too. So it's your choice. Either you want a wife or you are blessed to where you don't need one. It's the same as like it's you're not it's still it's you're still blessed okay now paul did say that if possible if you did have the choice if you were blessed in a way where you didn't need to be married then that would be even better because then you wouldn't have to deal with uh you know your spouse and you could just be with the lord only all the time but god is merciful and so, if you need to have a wife, if you need to have a husband, then you can. So, thank the Lord for that. That's mercy. And we talked about how God hates, God hates when people make money off the backs of the poor. God hates when people um, treat the poor badly. It's bad enough that people are poor. That's bad enough. But 
when you have people, rich people, taking advantage of poor people, making them work for basically nothing so they can get more money or not helping, not helping the people. Um, so, but like it's like the Bible says, though, that's like I said, they will get theirs for that. Rich people will get their rewards for that. And when Jesus comes back, there, that, that's not going to be going on. There's going to be no rich people. Um, there's not going to be any poor people like that. So um, that's going to come to an end, as it should. Um, and then as far as uh, the other scriptures here, um, just basically, as I've said, it seems like I'm saying this every single time. Every It seems like all these scriptures keep saying, keep saying it. You have to read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. I'll ask you again. What lies has the devil told you that makes you not read the Bible? What lies has he convinced you of that, that makes you not read the Bible? I am telling you the truth. You will regret wholeheartedly that you do not read the Bible. You will one day regret that. Because you're being a fool, as the word says. So the devil is a liar. Read the word. Get into it. I think about it. Think about it. Why is it you can do anything you want to do? But when it comes to the Bible, all of a sudden you're you 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 you're, you're, you're in prison. You can't do it. You can't break free. You're too tired. You don't have enough time. Um, you just don't want to. Like I said, you can't let, don't let that don't let that don't let the devil lie to you. Get into that word. Become wise. All right, I'll read chapter 19. The Proverbs and personal character. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he, than he who preserves in his lips and is a fool. The intention of this proverb is that poverty with integrity is better than wealth with with dishonesty. Just because you're poor, no mean you have to be. Does that that doesn't mean you don't have to be uh, um, have integrity and 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 have uh, you know you can't have nothing. Um, you know you have to. No matter your financial situation, you got to carry yourself. In the ways of the Lord. Because remember, if if financially you don't got nothing, if you got Jesus, he'll make a way. He will make a way. And you 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 have all the riches. All right. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he who hastens with his feet sins. If the soul be without the knowledge, of the Bible, it cannot come to good. The foolish of man perverts his way, and his heart frets against the Lord. Self will causes men to make fools of themselves. Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. Money attracts many friends, but most are fair weather ones. The poor, by not having any money, also have few friends. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall not escape. God hates a lying tongue and a false witness. Considering that, judgment will ultimately come on those who practice such. So, you know, you got you got those you got that this stuff this stuff went on this stuff went on back then, and it's been going on and goes on today. Um, you'll have these people. I had someone come into my chat, telling me that God told them something or something. But of course, I didn't believe them, and I told them why I didn't believe them. Unless something happened, and then when I said, "If you if 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 you know the word of God, then you will know what needs to happen before I would ever believe someone telling me something that came from God." Of course, they couldn't answer it, and they went away. So, so you know, if anyone ever comes to you and tells you that they have a word from God. Here's what you here here's what needs to happen. God says try the spirit. Test that spirit. 
See if it see it be a see if it is him. This is this how this is how you test it. Don't believe it until another individual comes to you and tells you the same exact thing that doesn't have anything to do with the other person. Alright? So let's say for example, um, I don't know, let's just say you uh I don't know. Let's just say you went to work. Somebody at work came up to you and said that. Then let's say you went home. And then, you know, next day you were at your um, family member's house. And one of your cousins or your aunts or somebody, they told the same exact thing. All right. That's two people that came to you with the same exact thing. But if that's not good enough for you, ask the Lord to send a third. Send a third witness to see, to test it, to see if it's true. So don't ever believe anyone who comes up to you and tells you something about what God wants to tell you. Test it. Have it proved. Have another witness come to you with the exact same thing. And if that ain't good enough, have another one come in for the exact same thing. There's a lot of false witnesses going around. All right. Many will entreat the favor of the prince and every man is a friend to him who gives gifts. The heart of a man is basically hypocritical and is shown in these efforts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursues them with words, yet they are wanting to, they are wanting to him. While the prince is in power, everyone is his friend. However, when he is out of office, he can no longer bestow gifts, possibly because of reversal of fortunes, and becomes poor. Those who formerly swore allegiance to their dying day now hate him. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul, but he who keeps understanding shall find good. The wisdom and understanding of this proverb means heavenly knowledge, which can only become which only can come from the Bible. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. Verse 9 is not a needless repetition of verse 5. The latter verse defines the punishment of announced in the former. The repetition emphasizes God's just anger against falsehood and his love for humanity, especially for the oppressed. The light is not seemingly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over prince, princes. The first part of this proverb refers to a fool who is of a royal birth and enjoys luxury, rank, and honor. His rule brings no delight. The second part refers to a servant who somehow finds himself in a position of authority. Generally, when this happens, he is cruel and tyrannical. The discretion of a man defies his anger and it is the glory to pass over a transgression. A forgiving spirit marks a true man of God under both the first and second covenants. The king's wrath is in the roaring of a lion, but his favor is in the dew upon the grass. Opposition to lawful government ensures just suffering, but obedience secures prosperity. So let's read that again. A king's wrath is in the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon grass. Opposition to a lawful government ensures just suffering, but obedience secures prosperity. So as long as the government is lawful, doing correct, then you should be obedient to that to the government. Go with it. But obviously we have a government today that is not lawful. It is it is evil and of the devil. All right, a foolish son is the calamity of his father and the contentious of a wife are continually dropping. An example is the Chinese water torture. A drop of water dropped on a person's head causes a little difficulty, but a perpetually continued will drive one to insanity. House or riches are the inheritance of the fathers and their prudent wife is from the Lord. This woman is the utter contrast to the one in verse 13. She may have been... She had many causes for a compliment, but she avoids them all. Slothfulness cast into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. And the Bible, laziness is, as by now should be obvious, roundly condemned. So, God hates laziness. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of laziness. Um, a lot of laziness, right? God hates that laziness. He who keeps the commandment keeps his own soul, but he who despises the way shall die. Let me, let me go back to laziness real quick. You know what that means? You know what laziness really is? You know why God hates it? Because laziness is only a sign 
that you are living out your life in your in your ability, your power, instead of living life in his glory and power and ability, instead of having your faith in Jesus and, and living through him, you're living through self. And that's why you're lethargic, you're lazy, you just can't do nothing. Trust me, I've been there, you've been there, we've all been there. So I know about it. But that's all it is. When you're feeling lazy, that just means you're not in the Lord. Because the Lord ain't lazy. So we can do things by his power and glory. We can do things by his energy and strength. We just got to be in that right faith. We just got to have our faith correct. All right. Um, he, who, who, he who keeps the commandment keeps his own soul, but he who despises the way he shall die. He who cherishes the commandment, the Bible, safeguards his life. Indifference to divine teaching, his way causes spiritual death. He who has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord. And that which he has given, he will pay him again. In this proverb, God guarantees the gift or the debt. Chasing your son while there is hope, and let not your soul spare for his crying. This speaks of proper discipline. So, chasing your son while there is hope, and let not your soul spare for his crying. So, once again, just another verse for the parents out there. Um, don't worry about them crying. Beat them, I say beat them, whip them while there's still hope. Tragically, tragically, many are not whipping their kids while there's hope. And there's going to come a time where there's no hope. They've already grown of an age where it's too late. You've, you've grown a corrupted person. It's on you now. You reap what you sow. So, I just can't. I just can't. I can't encourage parents enough to whip their kids when they when they when they need it. To bring them into line. To bring them into order. While there's still hope. But tragically, a lot of most parents aren't doing that, and they're going to reap what they sow. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if you deliver him, yet you must do it again. The need of such a man is for his great wrath to be thrown, not for someone to pay his fine. Hear counsel, oops, hear counsel, <coughs> counsel and receive instruction, that you may be wise in your latter end. The counsel and instruction <coughs> spoken of here pertain to the Bible. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. The Bible alone will stand because it is the word, the counsel of the Lord. The desire of a man in his kindness and a poor man is better than a liar. The latter portion of this proverb means that a little kindness received from a poor man is better than the false promises of a rich liar. The fear of the Lord tends to life, and he who has it shall by it satisfy. He shall not be visited with evil. To love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ lends to an endless life of abiding bliss. Not to do so results in everlasting misery. A soulful man hides in his hands and his bosom and will not so as much bring it to his mouth again. The soulful is constantly claiming to be sick, hiding his hand in his bosom, when in fact <clears throat> he is only lazy and wants somebody to put food in his mouth. If it is done once, he will not want it done again. He will he will want it done again and again. That's the reason Paul said if they don't work, they don't eat. So I, I'm gonna do a video on this. I right, let me let me highlight this scripture. Let me let me take a picture of the scripture real quick so I can do a video on this because this is an epidemic. This is an epidemic. People not working, um, being slothful, welfare, being on welfare. Um, you you get fed like a little child. From the government, let me take a. I'm gonna take a. Uh, I just want to take a picture of that scripture, so I can remember that and do a video focused on that, because it's an epidemic. Um, people 
living living on handouts, um, not working. So there's lots of jobs out there. You got to get one. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware and reprove one who has understanding, and he will understand knowledge. Some claim that punishment for crime is no deterrent. While it is true that this is not the best deterrent, which is the conversion of the soul, still judgment of evil definitely is a deterrent. Um, excuse me. Oh, hold on. Oops. He who wastes his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. This speaks of a son who wastes his father's goods and then upon the father's death refuses to allow the aged mother to live with him or else to, or, or else to provide for her necessities. <clears throat> I tell you what. Um, let, 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 let us pray to God that we can help our parents uh, if, when, if they ever need help. I'll tell you that. Uh, cease my son to hear the instruction that causes the err from the words of knowledge all the proverbs spoken to my son are from the lord to solomon anything that steers a person away from the bible is called error by the holy spirit an ungodly witness scorns judgment in the mouth of the wicked devours and devours iniquity the ungodly witness is similar to the false witness of 19:9. god has promised that such would not be unpunished judgments are prepared for scorners and strikes for the back of the fools the Holy Spirit states unequivocally that despite the scorning mouth of the wicked, judgments are prepared by God for these scorners. All right. That's 18 and 19 from the book of Proverbs. A lot to take in there. A lot. A lot of knowledge and uh, wisdom. All right. Um, God bless you. And um, remember, get into the word daily. Get into that word. If you don't do nothing else, get into that word. You will not regret it. All right. God bless you.